So you suffer one of two reasons. You're either suffering because of your sin that you haven't repented and God is disciplining you, chastening you to shame you to repent. And if that's why you're suffering, shame on you, shame on me. May God save me from being a hypocrite. Or you're suffering for the sake of Jesus and righteousness, like Jesus suffered, like the apostles suffered, the prophets, like Joseph. And if you're suffering because you're righteous and you love the Lord and won't compromise, glory to God, the Lord delights in you and he'll exalt you. Right? So I hope I'm not too loud. So with that said, are we ready to talk about Quran variants? Now we can talk about Quran variants. Variants that matter. We're going to have to do a part three, so let's go to variants that matter. Let me get you the articles. We'll talk about them. Now, the reason why these variants are important, let me remind you. Here it is, part one and part two. A Quran variant that makes a difference, part one. Here's the link. I'm going to give it to you twice. Right? And here's part two. The reason why these variants are important, because these are not variants that stem from the Uthmanic recension. What do I mean by Uthmanic recension? We know now, because Jay Smith and Hatun Tash and others have made it popular, we know now that the Mus'haf, the Codis of Uthman, has come down to us in various Arabic readings called Qirat. Some pronounce it Qira'at. Qira'at. Seven Arabic versions of the Uthmanic Quran were chosen. Those seven versions were transmitted through two lines of transmission for a total of 14 Arabic versions of the Uthmanic Quran. And then they also added three particular Arabic versions for a total of 20. There are about 20 Arabic versions of the Quran. The most famous of which is the Hafs version. And Hafs was considered a liar. Now that's the Uthmanic Quran. The Uthmanic Quran. Okay? That's the Uthmanic Quran. I'm not talking about the variant readings among the extent Arabic versions of the Uthmanic Quran. The variants that I highlight, and I'm going to highlight one that's very significant, Lord willing, this week, from Tabari, are the readings found in the Qurans of Abdullah ibn Masood, Ubay ibn Ka'b, ibn Abbas, and the Quran compiled by Zayed ibn Thabit, which Uthman standardized. See, a lot of Muslims are not aware, but Muslim scholars are aware, that when Abdullah ibn Masood, Ubay ibn Ka'b, ibn Abbas, and others wrote down the Quran that they learned from Muhammad, even though Uthman passed an edict around 650 AD to have those Qurans burned and destroyed, there were people who had memorized those Quranic readings and or had written them down. And so those readings did not completely disappear. Those readings were still in circulation centuries after the Uthmanic purging of the Quran. So that in later works of commentaries, tafsirs, they would mention the reading in Abdullah ibn Masood's Quran, the reading in Ubay ibn Ka'b's Quran, the reading in Ibn Abbas's Quran, and because they mentioned those readings, we can see how the Qurans compiled by Muhammad's companions who learned the Quran directly from Muhammad, contradicted one another, did not perfectly agree with one another, and read verses differently from one another. You understand why these very readings are significant? Do you understand why these variant readings are significant? So I'm not giving you variant readings from the Arabic versions that stem from the Uthmanic recension. These are readings, catalog, mentioned by Muslim scholars, taken from what was found in the Quran of Abdullah ibn Masood, found in the Quran of Ubay ibn Ka'b, found in the Quran of Ibn Abbas, readings written down by companions of Muhammad, who learned the Quran directly from Muhammad, who when they wrote down what they learned, contradicted one another, did not agree one another, destroying the lie and the myth that the Quran was perfectly preserved.
You see? You with me there? So let me give you an example. Now, why do I keep mentioning Abdullah bin Masood and Ubay bin Ka'b? Here's why. And why do I mention Ibn Abbas? Let me tell you why. Here you go. Let me show, to explain to you why I'm mentioning them. Okay? Here's why. You ready? Here you go. This comes from part two. Here's the link again. Why is Abdullah bin Masood? Why is Ubay bin Ka'b? And why is Ibn Abbas important? And why do their Qurans hold weight? Here's why. You ready? Let me read it to you. Sahih Muslim, book 31, number 6024. All of the hadiths are quoted in part two right there. Masruq reported, we used to go to Abdullah bin Amr and talk to him. Ibn Numair said, one day we made a mention of Abdullah bin Masood. Whereupon he said, you have made mention of a person whom I love more than anything else. I loved Abdullah bin Musud more than anything. I heard Allah's messenger, meaning Muhammad saying, learn Quran from four persons. So when Muhammad said, learn the Quran, he didn't include Zayd ibn Thabit, or Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan, or Uthman ibn Affan. Look who he mentioned. Muhammad said, four men are the authorities on the Quran. Go to these four men, watch. He mentioned first, Ibn Um Abd, Abdullah Ibn Masood, he started from him. Then Muad bin Jabal and Ubay bin Ka'b and Salim, the ally of Abu Hudhaifa. You see why he's important? Muhammad said two of the four men to learn the Quran from. Two of the four men that you must learn the Quran from, from he only mentioned four. Two of them was Abdullah Ibn Masood and Ubay bin Ka'b. These were the best reciters of the Quran. Muhammad said, these four, learn it from them. And he started with Abdullah ibn Masood. That's why the man said, I love Abdullah ibn Masood because the prophet mentioned him first. There's the link to that hadith. That's in Sahih Muslim. What about Sahih Bukhari? Sahih Bukhari, volume five, book 58, number 153. What? Narrated Masruq. Abdullah bin Masood was mentioned before Abdullah bin Amr, who said, that is a man I still love. That is a man, Abdullah bin Masood is a man I still love. As I heard the Prophet saying, learn the, recit the recitation of Quran from four, from Abdullah ibn Masood, he started with him. That's what the Muslims saying, I'm not saying it. Salim, the freed slave of Abu Hudhaifa, Muad bin Jabal, and Ubay bin Ka'b. So folks, who better than Muhammad to tell you who to learn the Quran from? And Muhammad said, learn the Quran from Abdullah ibn Masood. He started with him and Ubay bin Ka'b. And this is in Sayyid Bukhari. I just gave you the link. Sayyid Bukhari, okay. <clears throat> Volume 5, book 58, number 153. Now, what about Ibn Masood? I'm sorry, Ibn Abbas. What about Ibn Abbas? Why is he important? Now, watch why Ibn Abbas is important. Sayyid Bukhari, Volume 1, book 3, number 75, okay. Narrated by Ibn Abbas, once the Prophet embraced me and said, O oh Allah, bestow on him the knowledge of the book Quran. Ibn Abbas was Muhammad's first cousin, who Muhammad prayed that Allah would give him accurate knowledge of the Quran. Sayyid Bukhari, volume one, number 75. Here's the link. You can read it. Here it is. Are you guys following with me? Or are you guys going to sleep? Why these men are important? Why are these men important? Okay. Here's another one. Again, Sayyid Bukhari, Ayyub 5, Book 57, number 100. Okay. Narrated by Ibn Abbas. Once the Prophet embraced me, pressed me to his chest and said, Oh Allah, teach him wisdom, i.e. the understanding of the knowledge of Quran. So Muhammad prayed, teach Ibn Abbas the understanding of the Quran. Give him wisdom. Give him knowledge of the book. And here's the link. And I'll read one more. Here it is. Okay, here it is, guys. It's all in the articles. And here are the links. Please, learn these facts to destroy Islam for the glory of Christ before it's too late. Okay. Final one from Sa'id Bukhari. This is all from Sunnah.com. Sa'id Bukhari, volume 5, book 57, number 101. Married by Abdul Warith, the slave of the heir. 
The same but said, O oh Allah, teach him Ibn Abbas the book, i.e. the understanding of the knowledge of the Quran. So if I believe the ahadith, and these are sahih, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. Muhammad told me to get, get the Quran from Abdullah ibn Masood, Ubay ibn Kaab. Nowhere did he mention Zayd ibn Thabit. Nowhere did he mention Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan. Nowhere did he mention Umar ibn al-Khattab. Nowhere did he mention Abu Bakr. Nowhere did he mention Uthman ibn Affan. Are you telling me Muhammad did not know who the most qualified, most reliable teachers of the Quran happened to be? Abdullah ibn Masood, Ubay ibn Kaab. Moreover, Muhammad prayed Allah would give Ibn Abbas, his first cousin, because they're fathers or brothers, wisdom, understanding the book, to know the book. Are you telling me that Allah dishonored your prophet by failing to make Ibn Abbas one of the most knowledgeable, if not the most knowledgeable men when it comes to the Quran? Okay, now why is that important? Well, in the readings of Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Masood, Ubay ibn Ka'b, you will find their versions of specific verses in contradiction and conflict with the Quran you read today, standardized with Uthman ibn Affan. And these readings do change the meaning of the Quran. Let me give you one example. This is from part two. What was the original reading of chapter 36, verse 38 of the Quran? Let me show it to you. In the Quran that you read today, this is in part two, guys. I gave you the link, and I'll post it in the description box and pin it as a comment. In the Quran that you read today, 3638, the Uthmanic Quran, this is what you'll find. And the sun runs on its fixed course for a term appointed. Watch. Let me repeat. The sun runs on its fixed course for a term appointed. That is the decree of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. 3638, here it is. According to today's Quran, the sun runs on a fixed course. It has an orbit. It travels on a fixed course. It has an orbit. There it goes. God, I know you're upset that your mother was a Shia whore, but don't blame us. Blame your bastard Muhammad, that filthy dog. Here it is. You see it? You got it? And the sun runs on its fixed course. Now, according to the sound traditions of Muhammad, the sun's orbit entails the sun going before the throne of Allah, prostrating before the throne of Allah, and then returning back on its course until it sets in a muddy spring. And when it sets physically in a muddy spring, and then returns back on its orbit. Are you guys ready for this? Here it is. Okay. Here it is. Let me give you the online version. Here it is. Of Sunan Abu Dawood. Read it, guys. Here it is. Sunan Abu Dawood. Book 32, Dialects and Readings of the Quran. Kitab al huruf wal al Qiraat. Right? The chain is Sahih. Sahih and chain al Albani, a Sahih, a sound chain. Here it is. I'm not lying. Click on it, guys. Sunnah.com. This is from Sunnah Abu, Abu Dawood. It's Sahih. English translation, book 31, hadith 3991. 3991. Narrated Abu Dhar. I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, Do you know where this sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, it sets in a spring of warm water, Hamiya. He didn't say, it looks to you as if it's setting. That's how you perceive it. No, no, no. It physically sets in a spring of warm water. You got it? Can you click on the hadith and see it for yourself? So Muhammad receives wahi, inspiration from Allah who tells him this sun physically descends and sets in a spring of warm water, murky water. 
muddy spring. And that's the explanation of chapter 18, verse 86 of the Quran. Here it is. You got it? And guys, what is the classification? Sahih. It's sound. Sahih. Sound. Okay, you with me there? It is sound. Okay, now, let's see the very reading that changes the meaning of the Quran. What do I mean? According to the Quran you read today, 3638 says that the sun runs on a fixed course. Now get ready for the variant reading. Tafsir ibn Kathir. Watch the nonsense and the stupidity. Tafsir ibn Kathir. Here's the link. The bridge English translation of Tafsir ibn Kathir. Adam.org. Guys, it's all in my article. I link to the site where you can read them with your own eyes. Here's the link. Adam.org. Let's read. Shall we? You ready? Please pay attention. Learn this stuff. Okay, learn this stuff. Watch here. Let's begin. And this is Ibn Kathir's explanation of 3638. Allah is saying, and the sun runs on its fixed course for a term appointed. That is the decree of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. There are two views over the meaning of the phrase. What does it mean that the sun runs on a course that's fixed, determined by Allah? Okay, now watch. On its fixed course for a term appointed, the first view is that it refers to its fixed course of location, which is beneath the throne, beyond the earth, in that direction. So according to Muhammad and his followers and their followers, Allah has decreed that the sun will travel until it approaches Allah's throne. Now watch the nonsense and the stupidity. Wherever it goes, it is beneath the throne. Why? Because according to Muslims, Allah's throne is above all creation, which makes sense if they believe that the universe is a dome and the earth is a flat surface. So imagine the universe as a dome, right? And the earth is a flat surface and over this physical dome is the throne of Allah situated above it. Now watch what he says. So, you know, I'm not making it up. Watch what he says so you know I'm not making it up. Listen, okay? Wherever it goes, it is beneath the throne, it and all of creation, because the throne is the roof. Allah's throne is the roof of creation, and it is not a sphere, as many astronomers, astronomers claim. So if you're a flat earther, well, the Quran is a flat earth book. If you believe the earth is flat, well, according to the Quran and the son of Muhammad, the universe is flat. It's a flat surface. Notice what Ibn Kathir said. It is not a sphere, as many astronomers claim. So at the time of Ibn Kathir, there were already astronomers saying the earth was spherical. And the Muslim scholars of the Quran and Sunnah said, no, it's not. The earth is flat. In fact, the universe is a flat surface and the throne is its throne, its, its ceiling. The throne is the ceiling of the universe because the universe, the earth, they're all flat. And the throne is the ceiling that covers the universe. And what did Ibn Kathir say? It is not a sphere as many astronomers claim. You guys reading it? Okay. So flat earthers, the Quran is a flat earth book. Rather, it is a dome supported by legs or pillars. So notice, the, the sky, the space, it's a physical dome. And it has pillars that you don't see, right? Carried by the angels. Rather, it is a dome supported by legs or pillars carried by the angels. It is above the universe, above the heads of people. When the sun is at its zenith at noon, is it is in its closest position to the throne and when it runs in its fourth orbit at the opposite point to its zenith at midnight it is in its furthest position from the throne so it gets closer to the throne but then it proceeds further away from the throne as it then sets in a muddy spring this is islamic science folks okay at that point when it gets close to, closer to the throne 
it prostrates and asks for permission to rise as mentioned in the hadith you follow with me so far you with me so far okay now let me continue because it's going to get bad al-bukhari reported that abu dhar said i was with the prophet in the masjid at sunset and he said, oh, Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun sets? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, it goes and prostrates beneath the throne. And that is what Allah says. So Muhammad is explaining 3638. Muslims, you can't tell me what 3638 means. Your prophet in the authentic tradition says, 3638 means the sun runs on its fixed course. And the course of the sun includes the sun going beneath the throne of Allah bowing before Allah, asking Allah, can I return back? And if Allah says yes, then the sun returns back on its orbit and sets physically in a muddy spring. That's what your prophet said the Quran means. Sucks being you. Don't dare try to explain it in such a way to make it agree with modern scientific understanding when your prophet already told you what it means. Sucks being you, Sunni Muslims. Time free to become Quran only Muslims. Okay, now let me finish it. Okay. That is what Allah says. And the sun runs on its fixed course for a term. This is Muhammad saying this is the meaning of the verse. That is the decree of the Almighty, the All Knowing. It was also reported that Abu Dhar said, I asked that message of Allah about the ayah, and the sun runs on its fixed course for a term. He, Muhammad, said the meaning of the verse, its fixed course is beneath the throne. Now watch the very reading, it's coming guys. The second view is that this refers to when the sun's appointed time comes to an end. At the end of the age, so this may refer to the end of the age where the sun, its course will then end, which will be on the day of resurrection when its fixed course will be abolished. It will come to a halt, they'll stop and it'll be rolled up. This world will come to an end and that will be the end of its appointed term, time. This is the fixed course of its time. Katara said, on its fixed course for a term appointed means it has an appointed time and will not go beyond that. So it's going to keep going to the throne of Allah and descending into a muddy spring, returning to the throne of Allah, returning to the muddy spring until the end. And that's when its course ends. That's the second interpretation. Now watch the very reading, guys. Let's see if you're paying attention. It was also said that this means it keeps moving in its summer orbits for a certain time and it does not exceed that, then it moves to its winter orbit for a certain time, and that it does not exceed that. This was narrated from Abdullah bin Amr. Now watch the very reading. Ibn Masood and Ibn Abbas, Ibn Masood, Ibn Abbas, Abbas, recited this verse as, now notice how they recited it. And the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. Let me repeat. The Quran of Abdullah ibn Masood, the Quran of ibn Abbas, read differently. Their Quran read, the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. But the Quran you have today says, the sun runs with a fixed course for a term. So which is it? Does the sun run on a fixed course or the sun has no fixed course? meaning that it is no destination and it does not settle in one place. Rather, it keeps moving night and day, never slowing down or stopping as in the ayah. And he has made the sun and the moon both constantly pursuing their courses to be of service to you, which means they will never slow down or stop until the day of resurrection. Now, again, notice the difference. Here's what the Quran of Uthman reads today. Here it is. This is the reading of the Quran today. Pick up your Quran and it says, and the sun runs on its fixed course for a term. But the Quran of Ibn Abbas and Abdullah Ibn Masood read the verse this way. And the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. I repeat, the Uthmanic Quran says, the sun runs on its fixed course for a term. The Qurans of Abdullah ibn Masood and ibn Abbas read the verse this way. And the sun 
runs with no, I repeat, no fixed course for a term. That's a contradiction. So does the sun run on a fixed course or does the sun run on no fixed course? According to Abdullah bin Masood, one of the four men the, that Muhammad said learned the Quran from, Holy Spirit, loosen my tongue, save me from stammering for the glory of Jesus Christ. The verse says the sun runs on no fixed course. According to Ibn Abbas, the man that Muhammad prayed, Allah would give him understanding of the Quran. His Quran read, the sun runs on no fixed course. It doesn't have a fixed course. But the Quran of Uthman reads, the sun does have a fixed course. That is a contradiction. That is a reading that changes the meaning of the verse. Are you with me there? Because I have one final one for this session. Why is Anna Chung and faith is an action engaging in a debate in my comment section? Anna, go back to your comment. Delete the comment where you're advertising for Dinir Ahmed thinking you're doing a favor, sister, please. Okay, everyone with me there? Do you understand this or am I putting you to sleep and it's going in one ear out the other? Do you understand? That is a very reading that makes a difference because that's a contradiction. If the sun runs on a fixed course, that contradicts the reading of Abdullah ibn Masood ibn Abbas that says the sun has no fixed course that it runs on. And whose Qurans are we to trust and follow according to Muhammad? Muhammad said, learn the Quran from Abdullah ibn Masood, not from Uthman or Zayed. And Muhammad said, Allah gave Ibn Abbas the knowledge of the Quran. So Abdullah ibn Masood, Ibn Abbas agree over against Uthman. That means the Quran they read today is not original. It's not authentic because the true Quran taught by Abdullah ibn Masood and understood by Ibn Abbas read the verse as saying the sun has no fixed course. Now the second variant reading that makes a difference. This is from part one. Okay, and Lord willing, I will link to these articles in the description box and pin it as a comment and wait till I get to part three, Lord willing, on chapter three, verse seven. Boy, will that be a nightmare, a huge embarrassment for Muslims. Here's part one again. Another reading that makes a difference because it affects the nature of Allah. The nature of Allah. Are you with me there? Can I give you the final example we're done? Folks, the final example we're done? You guys ready? I hope, honestly, I hope you were blessed. I hope you're challenged. I hope you're convicted. I hope the Holy Spirit used my mouth to speak his words, to bless you and show you we are in real danger if we don't turn to Christ, fear the Lord, love the Lord, and cry out for his miraculous power to strengthen us and embolden us to destroy this wicked cancer spread by Muhammad, who's under the feet of Jesus. All right. Now, the final example, and Lord willing, more to come in the upcoming sessions. And I'm going to retitle this because you saw the Muslims started barking and manifesting. If you want to see a Muhammadan manifest with the same demons that spiritually molested and raped Muhammad, watch how he was laughing. <laughs> Waste of time, guys. All right, now. Here is another one. Let me read to you chapter 37, verse 12 of the Quran. This comes from Dr. Mustafa Khattab, the clear Quran. All the links are in the articles, folks. You have my permission. Take my materials, upload them, translate them, clip them, study them. But please understand what you hear, see, and, and read perfectly. So you don't miscommunicate and misinform. 
be as accurate as possible in relaying what you hear and see and read for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now watch. In today's Quran, this is how it reads, 37, 12. In fact, you were astonished by their denial while they ridicule you. Let me repeat. Today's Quran reads, in fact, you are astonished. Now, supposedly Allah speaking to Muhammad, saying, Muhammad, you're astonished by their denial while they ridicule you. The word astonished is Ajipta, Ajipta. Lord, loosen my tongue, save me from stammering. The Arabic is Ajipta. We even use the word in Assyrian, Ajib. Ajipta, you were astonished. Ajib, Ajipta, you, who? You, Muhammad. But now I'm going to show you that the Quran, the Quran of Muhammad's companions, the Quran of Muhammad's companions read differently. Let me just get you the link in Zaku real quickly. All right. Let me just get it right here. It's all in my article. I just want to go there. It's a lengthy quote. The Qurans of Ibn Masud and others. Notice again, it's not the Arabic versions of the Uthmanic Quran, which are still in circulation. This variant reading was found in the Qurans of Abdullah Mas Ibn Masud. Notice who? Abdullah Ibn Masud and other companions of Muhammad. The Qurans that Uthman destroyed and burned. How did theirs read? Now, let me show you how theirs read. Now, in today's Quran, it says, you were astonished, Muhammad. Ajipta. In the Quran of Ibn Masud and others, it's Allah who was astonished. Here's how they read it. In fact, I was astonished by their denial while they ridicule you. I was astonished. Ajiptu. Ajiptu. I. Not you, Muhammad. I. Uh-oh. Here you go. The Quran of Abdullah ibn Masood and others read this way. In fact, I was astonished. Allah saying, I was astonished, Egypt too, by their denial, why they ridicule you. But the Quran you read today, it's Allah saying, you are astonished, Muhammad. Egypta, you, not me, you. So who is astonished? Was it Allah or Muhammad? What did the Quran originally say? Allah was astonished or Muhammad was astonished? Well, the Quran of Abdullah ibn Masood and others said Allah was astonished. The Quran of Uthman, which is what they have today, it says Muhammad was astonished. Well, Muhammad is not Allah and Allah is not Muhammad unless you believe Muhammad is the human manifestation, incarnation of Allah. So that Muhammad is Allah and Allah is Muhammad because Allah is Muhammad's alter ego. Either it says you are astonished by their ridicule and rejection of you, or I was astonished by their ridicule and rejection of you. Now let me read what Ibn Taymiyyah said about this. This lengthy quote, right, is taken from the following English translation, okay? Commentary on Sheikh Al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah's Al-Aqidah Al-Wasatiyah. Al-Aqidah Al-Wasatiyah. By the virtuous Sheikh Al Alama Muhammad bin Salih Al Uthaymeen. Darus Salam Publications, 2008, Volume 2, pages 41 and 44. Ibn Taymiyyah is talking about the attributes of Allah. Notice what he says. He uses this reading, this reading of Ibn Masud to prove that Allah can get amazed, get shocked and get astonished. You with me so far, guys? You listening or are you guys asleep? Because I'm about to get rid of faith in action for being a demonic troll, being used of the devil to distract. I'm about to get rid of him. Okay, you with me so far? Okay, now, Ibn Taymiyyah used the very reading of the Qurans of Ibn Masood and others to prove that Allah gets astonished, gets shocked, gets bewildered, gets amazed. Let me read it and then we'll be done. Here you go. 
It's lengthy, but bear with me, because he's commenting on the attributes of Allah. <clears throat> Quote, the fourth hadith, right? The fourth hadith concerning the affirmation of amazement and some other attributes. So Ibn Taymiyyah is saying that the Quran and the Son of Muhammad ascribe the following attributes to Allah. And this is the subheading of that section. The fourth hadith concerning the affirmation of amazement and some other attributes that Allah gets amazed. Okay. Quote, that is the statement. Our Lord is amazed at the despair of his slaves and the closeness of his goodness. He is looking at you in severe despair. So he continues laughing, knowing that your relief is near a Hassan Hadith. So guys, please pay attention. Ibn Taymiyyah quotes this hadith, Hassan, good, it's not naive, where Muhammad says two things about Allah. Our Lord is amazed, astonished, shocked when his slaves despair, and Allah laughs. So Ibn Taymiyyah and the Salafis believe Allah laughs and gets amazed. These are his attributes. Allah actually laughs and actually gets amazed and shocked. So let me continue. Are you guys listening? Please, guys, you got to listen to this. For your benefit, to destroy Islam for the glory of Jesus. Okay? Okay. Amazement. It is to be astonished by a thing, and this occurs for two reasons. So now Ibn Taymiyyah is explaining the two reasons why someone gets amazed or shocked. The first reason, the unawareness. You're not aware. On behalf of the one amazed, of one of the reasons for the amazing incident. Such as when something happens to him suddenly without any expectation. So you get amazed because you were not expecting it. That's what Ibn Tamiya is saying. This is impossible to respect Allah. Notice the begging of the question. Since he thinks Allah knows everything, there's no way that Allah gets amazed because he was caught off guard, caught by surprise. Wow, I didn't see that happening. So he says, this is impossible with respect to Allah. Exalted is he because he's all-knowing. Nothing is hidden from him in the heavens or the earth. Begging the question. Notice, begging the question. Since Allah knows everything, there's no way that his amazement is due to the fact that he was caught off guard by surprise. I didn't expect that to happen, Muhammad. What the hell did you do? <laughs> Man, that shocked me. Okay, now watch this. So what's the second reason why someone gets amazed? Secondly, that the reason of the amazement is that this thing is outside of what is normal for it and from what is appropriate for it, not because of any incapability of the one that is amazed, such as him doing an action that is astonishing, whose light is not appropriate for him. What in the world did this guy just say? Does any of you understand what this clown is saying? You see the gibberish? Sounds like Muhammad reciting the Quran. Do you see the gibberish? Well, the second reason is that as amazement is attributed to someone that you don't normally would ascribe such an attribute to because that someone is incapable of expressing that attribute. What? <laughs> this is affirmed for Allah, exalted is he, because such amazement is not as a result of an imperfection. So you say, it actually proves your God is imperfect and not the true God. But it is amazement because of the case of the one doing what is amazing. What in the hell is this guy saying? So Allah is amazed because of the amazing things someone did? <laughs> See what he said? Allah is not amazed because he was caught by off guard. Because that would mean he's imperfect. He's amazed because of the thing that the person did, which was amazing. Me, 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 me. Look, Ma. No hands. Okay, now watch. His statement, our Lord is amazed at the despair of his slaves. Despair is the worst of all forms of hopelessness. The Lord, the mighty and sublime, is amazed. See, Ibn Taymiyyah is repeating what his prophet said. At the entrance of se severe hopelessness into the heart of the slave. And the closeness of his change, the law... That word translated as and means with, meaning with the closeness of his change. So the Lord, the mighty and sublime, is amazed at how we are pessimistic while he, glorious and exalted, is he, changing things quickly. 
He changes a situation to another situation with just a word, and that is be, and it is. His statement, he's looking at you, that is Allah is looking at us with his eyes in severe despair. And Azil is the one in a difficult situation. Well, Kanitin or Kanitin, it's plural of Kanit, who is the one that despairs of relief and removal of difficulty. So the prophet mentioned the case of man and the case of his heart. His case is that he falls into a difficulty and his heart despairs of hope, feeling far removed from the relief. He continues laughing. So Allah laughs according to Muhammad. He continues laughing due to this amazing situation. How do you despair of the mercy of the most merciful of those who are merciful, who says to something, be and it is, knowing that your relief is near. That is the removal of your severe situation is near. That is, the removal of your severe situation is near. Now, did you catch it? Allah gets amazed and he laughs at your despair. Whoa, wow, you're really freaking out, aren't you? <laughs> you stupid Mohammedan. Don't you know I'm gonna change your situation? Why the heck are you despairing? So not only does Allah freak out and is shocked when his servants despair, he then laughs after seeing his despair. Wow, man. Dude, why are you freaking out? <laughs> Stupid Muhammad. You got it? That's what that's what Muhammad's hadith is saying. Allah gets amazed and shocked when he sees Muslims despairing of their situation. And then Allah laughs at them, you stupid. I'm near you. Stop freaking out, dude. I'm going to change your situation. In a nanosecond, I'm going to say kun, and it will be. So now notice his explanation. Pay attention to the variant reading. There are a number of attributes in this hadith. Firstly, amazement. So Allah, one of his attributes is that he gets amazed. Amazement is an attribute of Allah, guys. Note that. According to the authentic hadith and Salafism, one of Allah's attributes is that he gets shocked, he gets amazed. Amazement. One of the attributes of Allah, based on a statement, our Lord is amazed at the despair of his slaves. Now watch the very reading of the Quran that Ibn Taymiyyah quotes. The glorious Quran has pointed to this attribute. This attribute that Allah gets amazed is found in the Quran according to Ibn Taymiyyah. Where, Ibn Taymiyyah? Allah exalted as he says, nay, I wonder, Ajiptu, while they mock. Al Safa 37 12. Did you catch it? He now recites a different version of the Quran where Allah says, I wondered, I was amazed and shocked that they mocked at Muhammad. Who read it this way? Ibn Taymiyyah. But that's not how your Quran reads today, Muslims. Now, notice what he says about this reading. According to the recitation with the Dhamma and the type. And I want to read the footnote to this in a minute. It also contains a clarification of Allah's power based on his statement and the closeness of his change. And that is the mighty and sublime power is perfect. Whenever he wills, he changes the situation from one state to the opposite when a short period of time. It also affirms looking that Allah looks. These are his attributes. Based on a statement, he's looking at you and affirms laughing. Guys, note what the authentic Sunnah and Salafi Islam teaches. Allah's attributes include amazement, bewilderment, shock, and laughter. He laughs and gets amazed. It also affirms looking based on a statement, he is looking at you. And affirm laughing based on a statement, he continues laughing. And similarly, knowledge, knowing that your relief is near and mercy because the relief is from Allah, which is evidence of Allah's mercy for his slaves. When all of these attributes, which this hadith is evidence for, it is obligatory. Christians learn these arguments. It is binding, obligatory upon us to affirm. If you're a true Sunni Muslim, Ibn Taymiyyah says it is obligation obligatory that Muslims affirm Allah gets amazed, shocked, bewildered, Allah laughs. It is obligatory upon us to affirm 
that they are real for Allah, the mighty sublime, according to their realities, and that we not make we we do not allegorize them with them. Did you catch it? Yes. According to Sunni Islam and Salafism, all Muslims are obligated to affirm that Allah really laughs and Allah really gets amazed and shocked and bewildered and you cannot allegorize them and explain them away. You must affirm their realities. Okay. The behavioral benefit in this is that when someone knows this about Allah, glorious and exalted is he, he will avoid this matter. That is the sparing of Allah's mercy. And it is for this reason that the sparing of Allah's mercy is one of the major sins. Now, the hadith that he quoted and this very reading, where did it come from? In the notes provided by the translators, page 41, from the hadith of Abu Razin, where Muhammad said, our Lord is amazed. According to Ibn Kathir and his explanation of the saying, exalted be, or think you that you will enter paradise? al Baqarah 2, verse 214, and its wording is, your Lord is amazed, and the place of <clears throat> there is his reign. Now, the note to the very reading of the Quran, where did that come from? Page 43, translation note. Refer, referring to the recitation of a Safat 37 1, it meant to say 37 12, meaning Ajiptu with Dama on the, ta the top. Ajiptu. These Qurans read Ajiptu with the Dama on the top. I wondered, as in the recitation reported from Ibn Masood and others, while it is popular, what is popular is Ajipta with Fath on the ta, which is you wondered. So there you have it, folks. Ibn Taymiyyah is reciting the Qurans of Ibn Masood and others, where they read 3712 as Allah saying, I wondered, I was amazed. Ajiptu with Dama on the ta, right? But the popular reading today is Ajipta. You, Muhammad, were amazed with the Fath on the ta. This is another variant reading that makes a difference. Either the Quran had Allah saying to Muhammad, you were amazed, you, Muhammad, were amazed that they mocked you. You, not me, but you were amazed, Ajipta, or the original Quran read, Ajiptu, I was amazed, I was shocked that they mocked you. So what did the original Quran say? Allah was shocked, amazed, bewildered, Ajiptu, or was it Allah saying to Muhammad, you were amazed, you were shocked, you were bewildered by their mocking you, Ajipta. This is a very reading that makes a difference, and it's a variant found in the Qurans compiled by Muhammad's companions, Abdullah ibn Masood and others. And who's Abdullah ibn Masood? One of the four men that Muhammad said, learn the Quran from him and Ubay bin Kaab. And yet the Quran of Abdullah ibn Masood, the Quran of Ubay bin Kaab, the Quran of Ibn Abbas and others disagree and contradict with the Quran standardized by Uthman, who then destroyed and burned the Qurans of these men. But thankfully, their Qurans had left such a mark on those that learned the Quran from these men that generations later, they could still recall and write down the very readings in the Qurans of Abdullah ibn Masood, Ubay ibn Kaab, ibn Abbas, very readings that reached the commentators like Ibn Kathir and Tabari, who then mentioned them in their works, which we are now using by the power of the Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus and bury Muhammad, destroy his Quran, and expose his God as Satan. All glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There you go. Here it is. Here's the link. I just showed you two variant readings in the Qurans of Abdullah ibn Masood, Ibn Abbas, Ubay ibn Kaab, and Zayd ibn Thabit. Variant readings that change the meaning 
varied meanings that affect the interpretation, varied readings that contradict. So don't let them lie to you. These were Qurans written down by Muhammad's own companions who learned the Quran from Muhammad, who couldn't agree what Muhammad said, because when they wrote down the Quran that they learned from Muhammad, they produced Qurans that contradicted the other Qurans in circulation. All glory to the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Folks, with that said, this session is done. I will retitle it so people know what to look for. And I'll put the links to the articles in the description box and pin it as a comment. Please seek the face of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you learn, understand perfectly and completely what you hear, see, and read, and then accurately transmit that information through your own unique way of doing it for the glory of the triune God. And you can upload my articles, my sessions, clip them, translate them, but disseminate them freely. Now with that said, please pray hard for me and every one of us in the front lines that the Lord will grant us miraculous divine physical health, safety and protection. And for our loved ones, my daughters, ask the Lord to make us men and women of integrity, holy slaves of Jesus, truly loving the Lord, obeying the Lord, fearing the Lord, living for the Lord, and not be hypocrites. Ask the Lord Jesus to silence these wicked, filthy dogs who slander and mock and threaten. Ask the Lord Jesus to help me to get healthy and keep my daughters healthy. And ask the Lord Jesus for the miracle to bring my daughters for me to be with them every day until the Lord summons me or until he returns. And ask the Lord to grant them salvation and to provide for this ministry for his glory. And that I discharge this ministry with integrity and never shame the Lord or betray the Lord or bring disgrace to his name. And pray for one another. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus is alive forevermore. And Muhammad is under the feet of Jesus in hell where he belongs. Glory to the Son of God, the Father's heart. The Spirit's love, our God, our Lord, our love, our life. May the Lord Jesus wash all of us, our loved ones, my daughters, in his blood and fill them. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and keep us in love with him until he summons us or until he returns. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Abba, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.